It's Val Marie. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna do a very fun project. Uh, it's gonna be a Harry Potter costume for my birthday party. It is currently Thursday. My birthday party is on Saturday. So my hope is to finish all the cutting and sewing today. So tomorrow I have a little bit of breathing room to go grocery shopping and get ready for the party itself. So I dyed my fabric yesterday. I'll just show you the dyeing process and then cutting, sewing, and hopefully we're gonna make a great outfit. Now you might be wondering what costume I decided to pick for my Harry Potter themed party. I'm gonna give you a hint. It's green-ish. It's a Slytherin creature. It's Voldemort's pet. That's right, I decided to do Nagini, which is the big snake in Harry Potter. If you're not a fan of Harry Potter, I uh, actually, my assumption is that you're just not gonna click on the video and watch it. So if you are a fan of Harry Potter, then maybe you guessed it right. This is the cloak that I wore at a birthday two years ago. It is a perfect pattern. It has scales, so it would give a perfect look for my snake costume, right? It's too gold, it should be green. And the fabric is a little elastic. All right, let's try to dye it. I have a little story to tell you. Basically, this is my uh, pot that I used, the biggest one that I owned. And I thought that this pot would be enough to dye my cloak and absolutely not <laughs> this is way too small if i put the cloak in it it literally just fills the entire pot and there's gonna be no way for the fabric to be dyed properly because it needs a lot of room for the dye you know to diffuse and the water to move and you want to stir and have a lot of movement so clearly this pot was way 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 too small so i ended up going to the dollar store this morning and uh, i got this pot instead. This is the one I got at the dollar store and this is the one I own. I might have overdone this a little bit. I think this is gonna be way better. This was $55. So about the dye process itself, I want to disclose that this is my first time dyeing fabric. I'm motivated. I think this is a perfect project to try. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Ultimately, I already had the cloak, so that didn't cost me anything. The dye didn't cost much at all. What ended up costing money was the pot. But my logic here is I am gonna probably reuse this many times. It's definitely safer to have like a dedicated pot it's better to not mix it with food. This here is the dye that I purchased on Amazon and I'll link it if you need. It's the green dye, but really what I wanted to pay attention to was that this is a dye for polyester because depending on the type of fiber, the type of fabric, it will get the dye differently and polyester needs a specific dye. I filled the pot with uh, warm water. I'm just gonna first soak this because some people say you need to soak the fabric just in water alone. I think this is enough water for the fabric to move freely because I don't want to do too much water if um, I don't have enough dye, right? I only bought one pack. I just removed the cloak. This is just the color from the cloak before dyeing. I'm just gonna keep it. I think it's fine. And I'm going to add the dye now. I'm just gonna keep it at a simmer at most, right? It says to add some color intensifier and the color itself. So this will dissolve in water, so I'll just add it now. Oh, look! It's already working, it's already dissolving. That's pretty. Wow. That's exactly the green I would want. Let's see if it works. It does smell a bit terrible though, so I am going to start using the fan. So far not so good. The fabric has been dying for about 30 minutes. The beautiful shine that the fabric had is completely gone, destroyed by the dye, probably from the water temperature. And it doesn't look like it's 
turning green at all. The tag is very green, but uh, the fabric itself is not. So I'm gonna let it in for another 30 minutes. They recommend dyeing for about 30 minutes to an hour. After 30 minutes, it's not great. It's kind of pale and faded. Uh, I mean, I'm starting to definitely second guess myself on this project here. I don't have a plan B for my costume. I don't want to buy fabric for this costume that I'm gonna wear just once. Okay, let's hope for a better result at the end of the day. The fabric lost a little bit of its softness, that's okay, uh, the inside is still wearable, definitely. The other thing is that it is definitely very stinky. Well, it's not as bad as earlier because I let it air for a while by the window. But yeah, this is great, this is a great result, super happy with the color. It really looks like a snake skin which is what I wanted, so that's perfect. It's actually kind of scary that it worked so well. I'm so impressed. I do want to show you what the design is and what the idea is, because how am I supposed to look like a snake, right? My body isn't really shaped like a snake. <laughs> so let me show you. It's gonna be a, a two-piece costume with a pair of leggings and an altar top. I hope I'm gonna have enough fabric. The fact that I decided to not have sleeves, the shoulders are not even gonna be covered. My hope is that it'll be enough fabric. I do want a high-waisted pair of leggings. I think it'll look great. I'm gonna use a pair of leggings I have that I'm comfortable with for the altar top. I also have a top that I can use to copy the design. So let's do it. We're gonna go from this to this. Much better. Let's get started. I grabbed a pair of leggings that I have that are very comfortable and I compared the amount of stretch that the fabric has. They have similar stretch so it's great, it's a good indication. The reason why I picked these leggings, there are only two pieces, um, one piece per leg that wraps around so it's gonna be a symmetrical piece and then this little triangle in the crotch area to give some room. So this is really great news. Uh, it should be fairly easy to replicate. So I traced one of the legs and I picked the right leg because usually when you're working with a pattern you're, and there is a symmetrical piece, you usually draw the right leg and then you flip it to get the left side. So I aligned my center front seam here on this line on my pattern. I added enough to raise the, the waist. I basically redraw the curve here on the crotch and then just put my leg as flat as I could. I aligned the seam on this side. There's just one seam on each leg, right? Because it's just one piece per leg. Here I went a little longer. So once I did that and I had my center here at the bottom, I flipped the pants like this and now I could draw the other side here and here this is my center back. This seam is going to be sewn with this seam here and then so center back and center front here. So I just retraced the piece for the crotch area and I remembered to add the seam allowance which is a quarter of an inch. For the top portion of my costume, this is the top I want to use to as a base to create the pattern of my altar top. If you've watched my fallen wardrobe video, you will have seen this top as an addition to my closet. This is not really what it's gonna look like ultimately, right? But there is this 
high crew neckline that I want to replicate. I basically want the top to go from the armpit to around here. I kind of accidentally want to follow the, these um, leaves here. Maybe cut it around here because the legging is going to go over, right? So it will look like a completed top and bottom, like a full jumpsuit. It will actually be two separate pieces and my hope is that in the future I can wear them again since I'll have the top and the bottom separate. If I have enough fabric what I should do is a facing because for this seam here I need to find a way to clean it and I don't think turning it in is going to be sturdy enough. I could do a facing that ends under the chest. I would do the same piece for the neckline so it's going to be one piece folded and maybe sandwiched in between the outside fabric and the facing. That's probably the best move. I use this, the tracing wheel here, from this seam, the underarm seam, to the neckline. I am going to fold it in half, consolidate both sides since this is a symmetrical piece. I do want my uh, snake pattern to be symmetrical so I will not cut it on fold. I'm just realizing that the top that I'm using as template has more elasticity than my fabric. So I think instead of the quarter of an inch, I think to be on the safe side I should add an, a full inch I'm definitely glad I cut myself uh, before cutting the pattern and especially before cutting the fabric. So I think adding an inch around was a really good way to prevent this top from being too small. It would have been a disaster. For the back piece here, because I almost forgot that the front piece and the back piece are not the same. So this is the front here and for the back uh, I simply used the front and I traced the back with a straight line. Now I need to do the facing and for the facing I basically would want the facing to go all the way under my bust. I actually just marked the line here and I'll just do that to cut the fabric. I don't need to recreate an entire pattern piece. I did that for the front and the back. For the last piece, for the neckline, it's just gonna be a rectangle. Here you see how the sticker got green after the dye. I finished cutting the cloak. I have now three pieces. The rectangles that were used for the hood, one, two, and the main body. It looks like all the pieces are gonna fit. I pay attention to one thing. You see how the fabric has these like bigger scales and smaller scales and it goes like vertically. I just wanted to center the band with the big scales and I was able to do that. I've got all the pattern pieces here. So two legs, the crotch piece, the front and the back for the top and the front facing, back facing. Now you gotta be smart about the assembly. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach the crotch piece to the back, to the back, to the back, to the leg pieces. So that's, that's my first thing. I'll do that right now. I'll do the crotch seam to the, or to at least to one of the, let me think about it. <laughs> I said crotch way too many times already. So following my leggings, this is my left leg. This is the center front. This is the center back here. So I attached the crotch piece here with the serger. So this here is now the crotch piece uh, stuck in between my two legs here. So this is actually the center back. I first attached it to one side and then I ran it into the serger here and just did the entire seam. My iron is at the lowest setting because I don't want to damage this fabric. Now I have my front seam sewn together, my back seam sewn together and I need to do the legs here. I'm just gonna pin it and sew. Here in the back the crotch piece is gonna be sewn in the middle here. 
it is important that I don't panic. <laughs> it looks like I didn't account for the elasticity in the vertical side. It was supposed to be super high waisted. So I think I'm just gonna add a huge band around the waist here. I have another legging that has a Lululemon legging that has this waist band here. So I'm just gonna use that as a pattern and add it. I do have enough fabric left to do that. So I'll do it off camera because I don't have that much time left. And I hope that the ultra top is gonna fit better than the bottom. This is my neckline piece. I searched both edges and then I snipped the, the fabric here and here and I'm just gonna flip it over. This is going to be sandwiched between the front piece and the front lining. Let's start with the facing. This here is the facing which this side is gonna go against the skin and on the back I just sewed some elastic so that it's nice and straight. So this here is the main body. I also sewed the side uh, seams and I added elastic in the, on the front piece here on both sides. So we'll see. I guess my uh, reasoning was let's test out if I like the elastic better on the uh, shell fabric or on the facing. And we'll see. So now I'm going to assemble the main shell to the facing on the side seam here. So remember the neckline is going to go here. This here is going to go from the neckline to the armpit and then in the back. So I'm going to sew around here and see how that goes. It looks like it worked like a charm. The fact that I had the elastic alternating means that there's no not too much bulk here so that's great. Here I have too much fabric so I just need to add darts and I think that will do the trick. This excess probably happened because um, I used the elastic around the edge here but it somehow make it longer. The length of the top is good, I'm not even gonna bother hemming. 10.05, I am tired. <laughs> Did I fix the fit seven different times? Maybe, uh, but am I happy with the result? Yes, I am. It was worth the effort. I mean, the fit is really, really great now. The dye transferred on my fingers and my nails, that's okay. It'll be good for my snake transformation. Mm -hmm.